from Mirage, California, it's the Mark and Tony Show. Starring Mark Lantero and Tony Pomponio. Tonight's guests are television icon Wink Martindale and singer Jeanette Turner. Let's hear it for two guys while growing up always wanted to be somebody and now realize they should have been more specific. Mark and Tony. Hello, everybody. Thank you, thank you. What a crowd. Get on your mark, get on your mark. What a crowd, yeah, what a crowd. Don't touch my shoes, okay? Oh my God, those things are so shiny. Don't look down. Anyway, so, so what what do we got going on here today? Well, we got a lot of things going on here. I mean, I, I wanted to make sure the audience was aware that yes. um, this past week we had the ribbon cutting here at Bobby Botinas. Yes. We're very fortunate that the owner of the establishment, half the owner, Tina's working the bar, but Bobby's here. We'd like to bring Bobby up here to give him a big round of applause yes. of his new establishment. Yeah. Bobby, Bobby, come, come on, on up. Bobby. Get in the middle here. Come on up, get in the middle here. Get in the middle. This is our boy, Bobby. Everybody, this is Bobby, the proprietor of Bobby Potina. So Bobby, give us a little. Half a proprietor. A half a proprietor. Half a right. Let the audience know about how the ribbon cutting went the other day. Yeah. Well, we had a ribbon cutting last night with the Chamber of Commerce from Rancho Mirage. And uh, usually it's a small gathering of people that come, but for some reason I think everybody was very, very interested in this building, the river, what we've done to this building. The river is a very important part of Rancho Mirage. And we re-imaged the building in a very beautiful way. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make it a Rancho Mirage hang. You know, I call it a hang or a hangout. We serve great food. Um, we have live entertainment six nights a week. You know, we wanted a place that everybody feels comfortable to go. Um, my wife and I own the place. Um, we're here every day. We're a part of the community. You know, we greet you when you come in. And, you, um, you know, we're growing a, a very, very nice business in a very, very tough time. You know, f you know, with all the stuff that's going on out there, we keep evolving and growing a nice business. So thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for our support. And uh, there you go. Okay. Thanks, Bobby. A big round of applause for Bobby. All right. So and keep it going for Tina. Let her hear you at the bar out there, everybody. So, 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 so Bobby, don't leave. I need you as a witness. So last <laughs> week we were here watching the Super Bowl. And yeah. I remember on a previous episode, Mark and I made a bet. I had the Rams. He had the, the Bengals. Yes. Two thousand dollars, Bobby. Who won the Super Bowl? I think the Rams won. Damn right, the Rams did. <laughs> But, but they didn't cover the spread, did they? Thank you so much, they Bobby. They didn't cover the spread. So the check's in the mail from you now, or what? What do you mean the check's in the mail? You're supposed to go to bank and get some money before okay. we get here tonight. Right. What's the matter with you? That's called a surrender bet. <laughs> All right, everybody. On that note, Tony, Bobby, and I, we're going to be right back. Come join us at the all-new Bobby Bettina's Restaurant at the River in Rancho Mirage. Our menu features a broad selection of Mexican and American food choices available in the dining area and at the bar and our fabulous happy hour from 4 to 6 p.m. seven days a week. Bobby Bettina's is located on Highway 111 and Bob Hope Drive. Whether it's a nice quiet dinner for two or out with the gang, it's Bobby Bettina's, the place to be for a great time. Amp Cat City, local sports lounge with a festive outdoor patio, pool table, and darts. Serving a fine selection of craft cocktails, wine, draft beer, and light bar bites. Nightly entertainment with Angelique Gorgeous for Thursday night drag bingo for charity and the shadiest drag show in Cat City on Saturday nights. KJ Francie for Friday night karaoke. Stay for hot desert disco after the show. Visit our website, ampcatcity.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Mark and Tony Show. I have the honor and the privilege to introduce our first guest. Please just give me a moment here because there's a lot of information that we all need to know. Our first guest has been entertaining us for decades. First as a radio DJ, a TV producer, recording artist, and first and foremost, our favorite game show host. Ladies and gentlemen, please, it's the honor to introduce Mr. Wink Martindale, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So you know what, let's start right there, right with the game show stuff. Wink, how many game shows did you actually produce and host? Well, actually 21. 21 I either hosted and or produced. I never could hold a job. 
So I just went one to the other, one to the other. I know, I have to ask this question. I hope you're okay with it. Where did the name Wink come from? Wink is a nickname. It was, I was Winky as a kid growing up in Jackson, Tennessee. And a kid I used to play with, his name was Jimmy McCord. I still stay in touch with him. Uh, we used to play together in the neighborhood, and he couldn't say Winston. He had sort of a speech impediment. And my real name, Winston Conrad Martindale. And Winston came out sounding like Winky. So, of course, you don't get into this business with a name like Winky. So I just shortened it to Wink, and it served me well. My understanding is you were friends with Mr. Elvis Presley? Very much. Let the audience and myself know this. Yeah, how about that? Give it up, everybody, because this will be an interesting uh, conversation. Give it up. <laughs> I met Elvis on a hot summer night in July of 1954. I happened to be at WHBQ Radio. I was the morning man, but I was there that night showing some friends around the station. And um, I heard a commotion coming out of the studio of a DJ, crazy wild DJ named Dewey Phillips. He did a show called Red Hot and Blue, where in those days he played black music for white teenagers. That's when they were just getting into the, the real music, so to speak, away from Eddie Fisher and Joe Stafford and da da da. So I went in there to see what was going on. And it happened that Sam Phillips, founder of Sun Records, had walked in with an acetate, not even a record. He had just had one side of an acetate that he had recorded by a truck driver named Elvis Aaron Presley two hours earlier. So he gave wow. it to Dewey Phillips to play on the radio because if Dewey played it and got a strong response, you knew you had a hit. Well, the switchboard lit up. He played it seven times in a row, and I was the one designated to call Mr. and Mrs. Presley to find out where Elvis was, because naturally we all wanted him to come down to the station. So Mrs. Presley, they were listening because they heard the excited commotion over the record, and she said, well, Wink, he, he, he was nervous about his record being played, so he went to see a double feature Western. He's at the Suzor's Theater on Decatur Street. So they got in their truck and they, walked, they drove down to the theater, and walked up and down the dark aisles, and there was Elvis sitting in the corner by himself watching a Western movie. They whispered to him about the excitement. He came down to the station that night. I met him, and he remained my friend until the day he died. I'll be darned. So what, I, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold, hold on, Clark. What was the song? The song was, That's All Right, Mama. Well, are. that's all right now, Mama. That's all right with me. Fantastic. <laughs> Tell us about your new radio program on KWXY and KKGX. Well, I'm on the air every day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, from 1 to 3. And I'm just loving doing the radio show. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays, uh, they play my history of rock and roll. But on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I produce this radio show out of my home. I have a studio at home. And uh, I'm going back and bringing back a lot of the interviews. I did oodles of interviews when I worked for Gene Autry at KMPC in Los Angeles in the 1970s. So I'm kind of regurgitating those because they are so good and uh, they sound like they were done yesterday. And so that's kind of what my radio show is about. And um, I've only been on for about a month and I'm just loving it. I came down to be semi-retired. And then the guy came down and bought those two radio stations and he came to me and and wanted to build the format around me. And he made, as, as Marlon Brando said, he made an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> so here I am, back working again. Well, that's <laughs> close to home. So everybody, Wink is gonna be taking questions from the audience. Yes. So this will be interesting. Wink, Roberta Lynn from the Lawrence Welk Show. Uh, how many years have we met, known each other? And when did we first meet? We've, met, we've known each other for 152 years. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, but who's counting? I cannot remember where we first met. I feel like I've known you forever. I know. Well, you had me on your show. This had been a long, long time ago okay. when, uh, when we started the first television show with Lawrence Welk. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. And you look wonderful. Thank you. But you know what the three stages of man are? Youth, middle age, and you look wonderful. Oh. <laughs> so I never accept that as a, as a compliment. <laughs> you can have that. You can have that. <laughs> okay, next question. Yeah, hi. Can you please tell us about your records of the deck of cards? Yes. Uh, in 1959, I had a record contract with uh, Randy Wood at Dot Records. 
I had met him on my television show in, in Memphis. I was sort of the Dick Clark of Memphis in the mid-1950s. And Randy Wood uh, came on as a guest. And we went to dinner after it was over. He said, how would you like to be on Dot? I said, are you kidding? It was like an out-of-body experience for the question to even come up. So I came to California in March of 1959. And he said, I'll, I'll be on the lookout for something for you to record, and I'll call you. Just wait for me to call you. I said, yeah, yeah another one of those. Uh, yeah, I'll call you. Don't call me. I'll call you. Sure enough, I get off the air one morning at KHJ, where I did the morning show, and uh, it was Randy Wood's secretary. She said, Mr. Wood would like to see you in his office. And he was only about three blocks up from where we were on Vine Street, uh, right above Wallach's Music City, the old Wallach's Music City. And... Uh, I went into his office, plush carpeting this thick, I'd never seen anything like this, and he put an old 78 RPM record on the turntable, scratchy record, by a guy named T. Texas Tyler. And he started playing it, and I'm sitting there listening to this, and I said, who the hell's going to buy this? I said, the number one record in the country is Mac the Knife by Bobby Darin and Venus by Frankie Avalon. And I said, this is semi-religious talking record. But sure enough, I wasn't about to turn down a chance to make a record for the biggest independent record company in the world, Dot Records. And I said, no matter what, he, what it sounds like, I'm going to say, Randy, I love it. I love it. <laughs> sure enough, he took the needle off. He said, what do you think? I said, Randy, I love it. I lo <laughs> we went into a studio within two weeks, Master Recorders. Uh, and um, that was a, a country record that was popular in 1946 by T. Texas Tyler. And uh, we got a vocal group to come in, and we did sort of a pop version of that, put it out uh, in uh, August. And by November, it was one of the biggest hits in the country. S uh, some DJ in Boston named Bob Clayton just happened to put it on his radio show one morning, uh, and the switchboard lit up, and it just swept the country from that day forward. The first day after that, we got an order out of Boston for 10,000 records. And I remember the sales manager called me and said, Wink, we just got an order for 10,000 out of Boston. And this wet behind the ears DJ said, is that good? <laughs> she said, is that good? If we sold 10,000 a day by every record we put out, we'd be in great shape. So anyway, uh, in November, it was a huge hit. It sold over a million. I got a call from New York to uh, come back and uh, perform it on the Ed Sullivan Show. And it was another out-of-body experience. Because here's a guy. Here, here's, a, here's a guy who grew up as a kid watching the toast of the town, Ed Sullivan, every Sunday night. And all of a sudden, I'm going to be standing on that stage, scared as hell, but I was going to be standing on that stage doing my narrative of Deck of Cards. Campaign, a bunch of soldier boys had been on a long hike. They arrived in a little town called Casino. The and the next morning. day, since I was in New York, we went out to some radio stations to do some promotion. And I'll never forget, we walked into WINS. We walk into the record library, and who's over in the corner but Tony Bennett? When I was a kid, 17 years old, in my first radio job in Jackson, Tennessee, I was playing Tony Bennett's Because of You, There's a Song. And, you know, so, and yet when we walked in there and he was standing, he came to me to say hello. I didn't go to him. He came, shook my hand. He said, Wink, you were great on the Sullivan Show last night. Awesome as that. <laughs> okay, that's one. Any more questions? Andrew? One more question. One more question. One more. Okay, so I know you loved all your shows, but which one was your truly very favorite show? Well, that's easy to answer, and I am uh, very serious about this. The game show I'm sure you're referring to, right? Of all the game shows I did, uh, and I did four or five real popular ones, Tic-Tac-Doe would have to be my favorite. And I'll tell you why. Not only did I like the game, but those regular checks coming in each week are kind of nice. <laughs> They've paid for our house. And of course, Tic-Tac-Doe and I did uh, 
a show called Debt, where we paid off young people's credit cards. My first network show on CBS that lasted five years was called Gambit. Uh, get to 21 without going over. Yeah, yeah, Blackjack game. And uh, I, I just really, I feel so blessed. What's the old saying? Find something you like to do and you'll never have to work a day in your life. There you go. Yeah. Well, you. On that note, we thank you. We'll be right back. Kimball's Unique Boutique, located in beautiful downtown Palm Springs, is for women who are not afraid to attract attention. Our clothing is feminine, flirty, fun, and fabulous. Get the latest look. Large selection of jewelry, hats, and much more. Personalized service inspires our customers to keep coming back. Kimball's Boutique, across from the Hyde in beautiful Palm Springs. We look forward to having you shop with us. And don't forget to mention the Mark and Tony Show for your 20% discount on your purchase. Hi, I'm Mark Lanchero. And I'm Tony Pomponio. We're here to tell you, if you missed the show on Thursdays, no worries. You can catch a show on all of our previous shows on YouTube 24-7. Just go to the YouTube search bar and type in The Mark and Tony Show. The Mark, Mark and Tony Show! Be there! Come join us at the all-new Bobby Bettina's Restaurant at the River in Rancho Mirage. Our menu features a broad selection of Mexican and American food choices available in the dining area and at the bar and our fabulous happy hour from 4 to 6 p.m. seven days a week. Bobby Bettina's is located on Highway 111 and Bob Hope Drive. Whether it's a nice quiet dinner for two or out with the gang, it's Bobby Bettina's, the place to be for a great time. Our next guest is a fabulous performer who has appeared on many talk shows. Arsenio Hall, Roseanne, Jerry Springer, and Geraldo. Please, everybody, a warm welcome for Miss Jeanette Turner and Mr. James Bino Lewis, everybody. Thank you for having us. Hope you enjoy the song. The little song I wrote. Lying and stealing, that's what they're doing to me. You think you get justice, but in the end, hmm, nobody here is free. It's not even fair, they don't even care. They'll lie to get what they need. Hmm. And in the it's all a big show of who can lie better than he. That's what's going on, baby. Wheeling, dealing, lying and stealing. That's what they're doing to you. If you really think about it, they're doing it to all of us. And that's why we're all being screwed. Hey! In the end, you'll know that it's all a big show, but they're playing a serious game. And I don't care what they do, I just want my money so I can live that life in faith. And they're wheeling, dealing, lying, and stealing. That's what they're doing. think about it they're doing it to all of us and that's why our country is screwed but in the end I know that the people will show that we know the truth and we'll win in the end and love once again and move right To me, if you really think about it, they're doing it to all of us, and that's why our country is not free. I know in the end that it all will begin to change and be a better place, but we got to come together to make this thing happen, to make us all just a human.
Jeanette Turner, huh? Wow. How about this Jeanette Turner over here? What a beautiful woman. Mad on, hey. What a beautiful woman. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay, so, so nice. we're going we're gonna to start from the beginning, Jeanette. Tell us about uh, your upbringing in St. Louis. Well, uh, my parents were really very young when they got married. My mother was only 17 and my father was 19. And we moved every two years because my father had a speech impediment. But my father encouraged me with music because he played the guitar. And he sang with my grandpa, who was a preacher. And they were in control of the community, like in southern Missouri, like Greenville and we Sylvie, Missouri. And they used to do all the hoedowns for the square dancing. And so my grandpa, he played the fiddle, he played the banjo, he played the mandolin, he played the piano, he played the guitar, he played everything. And so my dad and his brothers, they all did too, see? Yeah. And they were the band. And so that's where I got my music. I didn't really think about even being a singer until I was 16 years old. My mother grounded me. And, uh, Why? Oh, I was a bad girl. I was a bad girl. We won't go into that, but anyway. We like bad girls. Oh, okay. <laughs> so when I was 16, she told me I couldn't have the phone and I couldn't have the TV. I could only have my stereo and I had this headset and I started studying the singers on the records I was listening to and I could sound exactly like them. How was it with Ike Turner when you were with him? I mean. Give us a little backdrop on that. Well, role. you know, Ike really got a bad rap in a big way. Okay. He had his faults. I was with him 19 years as his business partner. Wow. And Tina was with him 18. So I have one year over on her. But uh, the one thing that I know about Ike, he had a heart. And he had a good heart. And he wanted to do everything he could that was right even though he made mistakes along the way when he started figuring out the mistakes he had made mm -hmm. he decided I got to change this I got to do something about it when I was with him when I met him in the early the 80s okay I met him then and he took me with him to all these business deals you know and it was about this movie what's love got to do with it and they got him to sell his rights which was a big mistake he made a mistake by doing that you know and i told him i don't think you should do that because they're not going to let you have any control about what they're going to say about you Correct. you know because when you sell your rights you sell your rights you don't have the control anymore right. you gave you, them you've up lost all of that. yes and so that was really hurtful because we did an interview in ebony magazine in 1993 when they started filming the show mm -hmm. And even Tina was really unhappy about certain scenes in the movie because they were not true. And they show the movie saying, this movie's based on a true story. Well, there are some truths in the story, but people believe everything in there. But wow. I just want to stay focused on the positive side Good about Ike because I really Good loved him. And I read Tina's book, the new one that she just did. And I read it from the front to the back. I understand her pain, okay? Because mm -hmm. I have pain too. But I don't understand that when you have somebody in your life that's been so powerful to help you in your life, how you cannot give them just a little bit of love or for, you know, a little gratitude, a little something. Right. A little she doesn't thank famous. him at yeah. all. Right. And that disturbs me, you know? I understand that she's hurt, but I'm. I could be hurt too, but I loved him, okay? Mm -hmm. I know she had to have, or she wouldn't have been with him for 18 years. I went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Awards with Ike, and Phil Spector paid for our ticket to go, and this was in the early, late 80s. Okay. And they were inducting uh, Ike and Tina on River Deep Mountain High, and also Phil Spector, River Deep Mountain High on Tina. The manager came and told Phil Spector, hey, you can't let Ike go up on the stage to get the award. And so Phil came and told Ike, he said, hey man, he said, I'm so sorry, Ike, they're not gonna let you go up to get the award. And Ike was like, man, what the F did you have me come here for then? He was hurt, right. he had tears in his oh, eyes. Man. Even the first rock and roll record in history, he was inducted into the first rock and, roll, rock and Roll Hall of Fame for the first rock and roll record called Rocket 88, which also Wink mentioned, he 
met Sam Phillips at Sun mm-hmm. Studios. Well, right. that record was recorded at San- Sun Studios with Sam Phillips. I'll be darned. In 1951. Wow. That wow. record started that company to help them get going. And so, you know, he even knew Elvis Presley, by the way, because at the time, Elvis would come to the juke joints where Ike was playing, and Ike would talk about it in his book, because I was with him during the period of time that he wrote his book, Taking Back My Name. Wow, this is, this is also such mm-hmm. interesting stuff. Yeah. We're going to have to bring you back yeah, we'll again, a continuous to, conversation. We would yes. love to bring yeah. you back. So everybody, please give it up yeah. for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We'll be right back, everybody. So stay tuned. Amp Cat City, local sports lounge with a festive outdoor patio, pool table, and darts. Serving a fine selection of craft cocktails, wine, draft beer, and light bar bites. Nightly entertainment with Angelique Gorgeous for Thursday night drag bingo for charity and the shadiest drag show in Cat City on Saturday nights. KJ Francie for Friday night karaoke. Stay for hot desert disco after the show. Visit our website, ampcatcity.com. Well, we're back, everybody, with the wrap-up show. Yep. To my left, Tony. What a show. To my right, the lovely Angela, who is here replacing Mark Antonelli this evening. Uh, we thank you very much. Angela, Angela did a great job. Angela is a producer, an actress, and an all-around, a roofer, an all-around <laughs> queen of queens. So... We thank you for being on the show it with us fun. today and filling in. Um, I wanted to bring up that Angela has some projects that she's currently yes. working on right now with Sonny Velosi, the uh, producer, and of and course, Steve Mr. As well. Steve Tangy. Yep. Angela, the we're floor the, is yours. We're in the middle of um, doing a production called Always Here. It's a, it's a dark comedy, and we've actually pulled from Mark's Place alumni. So Steve Ciceron and Jody Littman are both involved with it. Um, we're shopping it. We've shot five episodes. We're going, yeah, getting ready to do six. We have plans to show it locally while we're shopping it. Um, the pilot, which is the first pilot I ever wrote, we placed in three film festivals just on the strength of the pilot. There you so go. I was very happy about that. Very good. We were semi finalists. We were semi finalists in three and finalists in one. It, it's a long process, and it's been helpful because everybody's pitched in. And that's been great. Yeah. Well, we thank you on your busy schedule that uh, you You're took some to time out, out to uh, be with Tony and I. Yep. Angela also, um, we were talking about the alumni from uh, Mark's Place. Angela plays my wife on Mark's Place. We're a mafia family relocated from Chicago out here to the desert. Tony kind of plays my henchman. And uh, <laughs> Gina Go basically figure, huh? is the boss, even though I think I'm the boss. Uh, you know, she, she, she pushes you around. She slapped me in the face one time. I didn't slap I mean, you in the face. Yeah, you did. You slapped me all of a sudden at the bar. You told me you slapped so me in the face. So, folks, on that happy note, we want to thank everybody for tuning in today. So, everybody, ready? Till next time, the Mark and Tony Show.